Hi, my name is Joshua Butler. I have been director on The Vampire Diaries and Nikita and The Following, and uh, you should all be listening to Variety Radio Online. We have Josh with us here today, one of the producers of Vampire Diaries. So Josh, um, I'd like to jump right in and love to hear what got you started in directing. What was your calling? Um, I was, uh, when I was eight years old, I decided I wanted to be a director. I saw um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, and I was amazed at the power of cinema that I could be taken to Jupiter, um, as just sitting there in the movie theater. And then I also got a video camera the same year for my, uh, for my birthday, so I started making videos throughout high school, and um, ever since that day, on my eighth birthday, I said I wanted to be a director, and uh, I've never actually had a backup plan. Uh, uh, yet, so <laughs> well, no, well, hopefully it's still, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. Um, also, um, what was your first project? Um, I, well, I went to USC Film School, so I did a, a senior thesis project there, a short film. But okay. then the first thing I directed um, was a show for um, the USA Network and then the Sci Fi Channel. Um, uh, long, long gone, called uh, G versus E or Good versus Evil at the time. It was uh, started in 1999, 2000, and then um, that launched me into some other USA and Sci Fi Channel shows, which brought me to um, some film work. I did some movies of the week, and I did an independent horror movie, and then found my way into the CW camp, where I've been uh, doing. Vampire Diaries, Nikita, Ringer, and Secret Circle, and um, and now I just did a few episodes of the show, The Following, which is um, which is also another, <laughs> I guess, exciting. another show you you recap, right? We do, <laughs> yes, we do. Excellent. <laughs> yes. Um, before we go into some of the shows, I was um, I know the fans would love to know you've done many sets now. What would you say is one of your favorite sets that you've worked on? As far as just the overall set, um, how it feels and the way it flowed. What was one of your favorite sets? Um, well, obviously, Vampire Diaries is, is way up there, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was a pleasure to work on that show, because okay. it's a great, great group of people, um, and since I was sort of with the show early on, and then I saw it evolve over the course of four seasons, um, it's amazing to see a lot of these young actors who started out in relative um, obscurity, they mm -hmm. weren't known, and then now they've all rocketed into superstardom and to watch that happen and not only did that happen but um, they all seem to keep their heads about it. They're, right. they're, no egos exploded uh, too too badly. So I mean, it's great when they stay grounded. It is. It is. It's important. Yeah. 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 Because the fans love that too. They you do. Know, that we yeah. know that they're grounded. Hearing some of them this weekend just say things like, it's important that I spend time with you. It is. And they're saying that to the fans. That just makes me respect them in their art. You know. Well, that's so, so true. And, and, and I think we're living in an age now with social media where um, there's so much more of a connection between those of us who make the shows and the fans who watch the shows. And there's such an, you know, like through Twitter just alone, right. the ability to communicate and to hear um, feedback almost instantly, like to watch, you know, a few seconds after something, you know, appears on television, tweets are happening about it, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As, as a creator or as an actor or as a director or, or somebody who's involved with the making of the show, I think it's important to uh, listen to the fans and to hear what they're responding to positively and negatively and, you know, make adjustments accordingly. And, and this, this has never been done in the history of television. It's never been, only in the last few years has there been this, the ability for a fan to mm -hmm. affect the course of their favorite show. Right, right. I th and I think they are doing that. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if you've heard about like Defiance coming out. I have, yeah. Yeah, Defiance is going to, I think, change some things if it works and flows well, how the fans interact with what's happening on TV. Exactly, yeah. So it's very exciting. Um, with Vampire Diaries, what do you feel is maybe one of your favorite episodes? Wow, one that I've worked on? Yes, sir, yes, yeah. Well, my good friend Kevin Williamson, who created the show with Julie Plack, um, his favorite episode, uh, or at least of mine, is called Klaus. It's the second season, episode 19, I think. And um, I have a personal fondness for that show, because um, Kevin and Julie wrote the script, and it was an episode where we really got to know um, Daniel Gilley's character, Elijah, um, who, you know, is a wonderful, wonderful character, wonderful actor, and um, 
there's something about that show flashing back for the first time to the uh, to the 1400s, mm -hmm. doing all those flashbacks and to sort of see and feel um, Elijah's journey. Um, there's something that I connected to, Kevin uh, Williamson connected to that, and I, that's that's kind of a, a personal favorite among our little circle. Very nice. Very yeah. Nice. Um, anything on set with the Vampire Diaries that stands out behind the scenes or something that was really funny maybe with the cast or something that just is um, very memorable memorable for you? Well, actually, you know, it's funny. Just I did the commentary on um, Do Not Go Gentle, which I guess the, the fans voted for today. And actually, um, the scene in the... Uh, the graveyard where the vigil for um, Alaric when he's mm -hmm. when he's dying and everyone's saying goodbye to him that to me the 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 ability to it's a very logistically difficult thing to get that amount of your cast at the same time you know it's like the way TV shows are scheduled oftentimes you know three or four actors will be working and then five or six will be off and then they'll rotate them out and you know it's so complicated you know and there's actors who are flying back to LA or doing publicity and so it's very rare to have all the actors available at the very same time but um, Julie Pleck had a vision for that scene and it was very important to I think for the first time in three seasons literally just get the entire cast of living the living cast right. <laughs> back together in one place and I mean it's such a short scene and a simple scene and, and there was a lot of discussion it, is this too much work to get a scene that's really only going to be on screen for maybe 15 or 20 seconds you know is it really worth the effort to get everyone there, and Julie said yes, and she was very, um, uh, you know, forceful about the way the way she said it. So, so we all figured out how to do it, and I think it was one of the best decisions that was made on the series because I think that has such an iconic image, just to to have everyone there and everyone feeling for a character that that you know for over two seasons, two and a, I mean two and a half seasons really right. was was such a major part of the show. And you know who was going to turn into uh, basically <laughs> first a, a vampire hunter and then and then again be be off the show. So it was it was a, a really lovely way to say goodbye, I think, to a character. And so that that to me has very very strong resonance. Feelings very nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, going from the Vampire Diaries, uh, congratulations on working on the following. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> great show. No, it is a great show, and it's definitely. Um, pulling in different fans and different followings and different groups. Tell us a little bit about how you felt working with the following, because it's definitely a different intensity, I think. It is, yeah. Well, again, it's a Kevin Williamson, you know, who created The Vampire Diaries with Julie Pleck. Kevin created the following, and, you know, Kevin's background's in horror. He wrote the Scream movies. He wrote I Know What You Did Last Summer and and uh, some many, many wonderful, wonderful movies of, in the horror genre. And, of course, also created Dawson's Creek, and so he also has that mm -hmm. wonderful kind of insight into how teenagers work, and, and you know, that shows up on the, on, on the Vampire Diaries. So um, the following, I think Kevin wanted to do something that was closer to the to his horror roots and something mm -hmm. that was more intense, you know, and more of an adult show, right. if you will. Um, even though it does actually have a kind of a bizarre and, and, and wonderful emotional core to it, you know, because, you know, obviously a <laughs> twisted emotional core, but nevertheless. Definitely. Yeah, yeah def definitely, <laughs> but, you know, that's the great thing about um, Kevin's vision for that show. It's that it should always play with your expectations and you know who you're rooting for you're mm -hmm. rooting for the good guys you're rooting for the bad guys which in a way you're doing in the vampire diaries because right. you know really vampires like Damon's a serial killer you know if you think about it he's killed a lot of people you know <laughs> and yet we, we love him you know right. so because we see you know how he struggles and how he's torn you know with uh, his bloodlust versus his desire for humanity and love and so you know on a, on a less supernatural level on you know the following you know I think that's what Kevin's trying to do with the characters of uh, you know Kevin Bacon's character and James Purfoy's character right. to try to to blur the lines between you know what's considered uh, good what's evil you know mm -hmm. and the gray area in between, so um, I'm happy did for him to do that. Right, I think he did a really good job of capturing the emotion right out the bat. I mean, yeah. he shocked you and he pulled in your feelings immediately in the first episode. Exactly. I saw it last year at Comic Con and it was, it immediately captured a lot of different feelings within that first episode. It, it did, was amazing. Yeah. It was so, a brilliant pilot. Yeah. yeah, it was a great pilot. And, and he's it's going through, it's, oh, yeah. he, he's carried it on through. Yeah, no, every week there's something that, uh, yeah, as you say, it's that, that sort of 
incredible um, complexity of emotion right. that, that you, you just never, you know, right. you want some expect. shows and it has all the lovey feelings <laughs> yeah, exactly. and you just that way the whole time. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> well, my, on Monday's episode of the following, the killing scene at the very end, yes. and Joe actually took one of his followers, how is that filming? Because for us, that was emotional. <laughs> Well, that's, you know, I mean, that scene is probably, um, of all the, the scenes I've directed in my life, that's probably right near the top of the one I'm the most proud of, because I think that that's a great example of a scene that um, is, uh, you know, uh, these, are, these are very screwed up people, obviously, but they, but they have the same desire for love and connection and, and, and honor, you know, the idea of, of being uh, someone's, um, being faithful to someone, being faithful to someone's ideas, being faithful to one's own sense of, of uh, you know, personal uh, good or personal evil, you know, so there's, there's, that, there's that complexity that, that, that's all there in that one scene because you're, in some ways you're looking at a lot of bad guys doing bad things, but in another sense you really kind of understand where Joe Carroll's coming from, where Charlie's coming from, and, and the sacrifice is done in a very loving way, and we try to create a loving atmosphere. You know, it's by the fireplace, a lot of scenes in Vampire Diaries are by fireplaces, we love the fireplaces, because it has that sort of romantic, warm light, and John Frizzell, uh, the composer, actually scored that scene with a full orchestra, so we wanted to give it that emotional intensity and treat it like a like a kind of a lovey-dovey scene you would see on any normal TV show. But uh, so it gives you that sense of of emotion that you and then but then you have to question exactly what you're getting emotional about and why you're getting emotional about it. And are, you know, are you rooting for for people that are really evil or are you actually seeing good in humanity? In, in people that you normally would have just dismissed. So it's, you know, that I think is what's, what's, what's great about that episode and that scene specifically. It's a beautiful scene. Thank you, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I'm very proud. Again, yeah. congratulations, I mean, you know, it's a great, this is a great show and, and we're glad you're kind of working with it. And oh, I am too, yeah. Um, one other question we were kind of talking about earlier before you sat down is, um, what is your ideal project or what do you have back here that we know is out there that you want to grasp that that Star Wars or you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind a Star Wars. Yeah, yeah no, you know. I wouldn't turn that. Down. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that you are no, no, as I mean, a director. Yeah, as a director, you know. look, I you know I love I love television and I I grew up you know obviously um, loving feature films and television shows. I I always wanted to end up in feature films, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I got my break in television and television's been very good to me and television is a, a great place to be now because so much good work is happening. A lot of feature people are coming over to, it used to be such a divide between movies and TV, now it's all mm -hmm. coming together. You know, a lot of big feature film talent is now doing TV, like Kevin Bacon, you know, this right. is his first TV show and in this environment, you know, it's, it's a very, um, classy and wonderful enterprise because the shows are are made they're distributed their uh, quality levels gone way up there they are like little mini feature films every week um, and all that said I, as much as I love TV I would love to uh, do obviously a big feature film I mean right. that's that's been the goal and so yeah I'm Pushing towards that, and I guess yeah, absolutely. You know, like you know, the total dream projects, Star Wars, sure, Any Star Trek, geek dream, Any right? geek dream. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. but you know, we all we all grew up wanting to be right. George Lucas and Steven Spielberg in my film school generation. Right. So you know, pretty much, <laughs> pretty much anything they ever did, you know, we'd be yeah. we'd be very happy to be a part of it. But um, well, we love supporting you guys. Yeah. Um, I was just going to ask you, with you doing so many different types of TV shows, like yeah. Vampire Diaries, The Following, and you've done Nikita, yes. which one is the most, which genre was the most difficult for you to do, and which one was kind of like, you know, I, I know exactly what I'm going to do, it's going to go out just like this, and it goes off perfect. That's a good question. Um, which was the hardest to do? Um, you know, I think that in some ways The Vampire Diaries is the hardest show to do because there is such a fine line that that show walks. I mean, it does it beautifully, I think, each week, but it's a very difficult formula because what you're asking to do is basically treat the mythology and, and the sort of the, the, the geekiness of it, the mythology, as, as a kind of... Um, 
as, a, as its own thing. I mean, you want to be true to it. You want the mythology to be interesting. You want people to be excited about the history of Mystic Falls and the, the ways that all the characters are interconnected. But at the same time, you also have to make it um, emotional and relatable to an audience. So it's difficult because you don't want to play anything too over the top. You want to keep everything kind of grounded, even if the, the situations are becoming you know, on the surface, very, very fantastical, and there's vampires that are, you know, eating people and running around and and uh, doing nefarious things, and then the, the hunters that are chasing them, and then all the conspiracies that are happening, you know, and then, of course, now you have witches and ghosts and, and werewolves and hybrids, and, you know, somehow you have to balance all of that and make it believable in, you know, make it relatable to an audience so people are, are identifying with the humanity of the characters that they can say okay well yeah even though that's a werewolf and that's a, a, a witch or that's a hybrid or a vampire I can understand what they're emotionally feeling at this time and you know it's very easy to skew one way or the other it's very easy to forget the mythology and make it all you know too, too emotional in a way and then it's also very easy to play something that is just um, about the uh, the the sci-fi element and not about the human element. So that, that's the that's the hardest show I think to work on. Um, an easy show for me w was um, like Nikita. I mean that was a just a it's a fantastic slam bang action show. They have a great fight coordinator. They have a great you know group of writers, stunt coordinator Maggie Q kicks ass and Shane Wet unbelievable. Yeah, and she's a terrific person and. a she does all her own stunts, so, you know, I mean, mostly she's That's like, amazing. it was just incredible. And uh, so when I directed that show, it was a really, really well-oiled machine. And, you know, they give you all the resources. They have some great producers and uh, who just give you the resources to make a really, really cool action show. And somehow they pull it off every week. And I just, you know, it was, it was a very exciting project to be a part of because that's, you know, it's exactly straight down the line action, which which is something I feel very comfortable doing. And it's a great action. Um, speaking of Nikita, did you watch the old Nikita? I did. Oh yeah, okay. you mean the? Uh, well, I've seen a lot of incarnations. I saw the movies, the French film, um, I mean, I the, the American series, film, and then the, the TV series. TV yeah, series. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, kind of, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, how it keeps going and going. And I also so. watched the Beauty and the Beast TV series, which is now you know <laughs> right. re re revamped again. Yeah, the Linda Hamilton one. It's. I think we like old ideas to come back. That kind of um, nostalgic fees and yeah, exactly. that happens. And it's smart for Hollywood because these are brands that that are recognizable, mm -hmm. and even if we don't know, you know, the actual original movie like you know say the fact that they keep rebooting uh, Spider-Man every right. 10 years you're like well wait a minute didn't we just see this with Tobey Maguire <laughs> you know but no I guess you know the, there's you know 10 years go by and then you can reintroduce the franchise to a, to a, to a new audience and they know they've heard the name you know it's like um, recently they just rebooted the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the yes. for the tenth time or whatever, and you're like, oh, really? Again? And but you know, it they works because even if because people know what it is, and even if they haven't seen it, and I think that's a key element to success. I think with that, a lot of times, people who read comics or who are really into sci-fi or into different genres, when a movie comes around again, it gives you the chance to say, okay, did I get a chance to get your ideas? Yes. Because you know, we all yeah. picture Spider-Man or Batman a certain way. Sure. And exactly. so every time it comes back out, we have that dream of, and as a producer, I'm sure you have the same thing. You want to take the producer side of it and put your ideas into Batman or Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, no, we all yeah. have our own little visions of what these things right, should be. Right, And yeah, and I, I, I don't think I'm alone in saying that um, I think Christopher Nolan's vision of Batman was a lot better than Joel Schumacher's vision of Batman. Just for example, uh, <laughs> you know, great example. I, I mean, I don't think I'm, I'd be no, uh, controversial in saying that. I think the fans would support you. I think they would say that. Yeah, yeah, given the fact you look at the the, uh, the difference in the response. And, right. Uh, so, but you know, God bless Joel Schumacher, but his he had a very cartoonish mm -hmm. and over the top you know, way of imagining the Batman movies and, um, you know, with the uh, the nipple plates and everything, you know, it was, and, and, you know, and, I, and it, that was his vision for it and he put it out there and people didn't quite go with that. Right. 
Yeah, whereas the Chris, fans. Chris Nolan said, okay, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> Let's, you know, and he did what we tried to do in the Vampire Diaries and, and, and all good, I think, sci-fi shows. You, he said, we have to ground this. We have to make this about the characters. Right. And you're not going to buy any of the fantastical stuff unless you believe in these, in these characters. And then hiring Christian Bale, who's a phenomenal actor, you know, it's, I, I, there you go, proofs in the, the results there. Well, we're very excited that you spent some time here with us Thank on the Variety you. Radio Online. Thank you. And, um, you know, we enjoy what you're doing and what you've done. Thank and you. the fans out there will continue to support you and, and thank you for the well minutes. the fans are really that's what it's all about you know without the fans you know we we wouldn't be doing what we do so well, we truly appreciate it no thank, thank you thank you yeah appreciate it